Penn and Kim Holder has joined us from their home in Raleigh, North Carolina, hoping that another relationship does not bite the dust over poor fighting. Thank you both for joining us. Um, Thanks for having us. I, Penn, I'll start with you. You have, what is it now, 16 years this week. Happy anniversary. Oh, Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, you know, thanks for reminding us. It's Thursday. So. <laughs> <laughs> how, I mean, how would you describe the 16 years? Uh, it gets better and better and better. Uh, I the, Look, I, I think that weddings, like, establish this dangerous precedent where everything's perfect, and then you go home and you've got all this stuff to deal with. But once you learn to talk to each other and maybe get a little bit of help like we did with counseling and find out the best ways to validate each other's feelings, it just it keeps getting better. So, Kim, you went to therapy, and that was the beginning of this journey of learning to communicate. What was the moment that prompted, okay, we need therapy now to figure out how to fight? I don't know that it was just one moment. I think it was like a lot of little things that were happening. We we joked that we did like the quarantine thing before any of you guys yeah. did because, you know, five years ago, we started working full time from home with each other. So we were working from home, raising kids together, married together. And it was a thousand little tiny things. We had a good, our marriage was fine. Our marriage was fine, but I knew it could be better. So I suggested counseling. He resisted at first. When you um, say you uh, knew it could be better, how were you defining better? I mean, you were surviving, you were thriving. You said you were fine. What was, what do you define as better? What were you looking for? I don't think either of us were bringing the best version of ourselves. I think we, I know I wasn't. I, I wasn't really hearing him. I wasn't making space for him. I wasn't listening because we were so caught up with like, who was gonna win this fight? You know, like the little tiny fights, like the little things about like, he's not putting his, you know, laundry in the hamper and I, you know, it would explode and escalate. Um, we just really weren't getting to the root of those and we were having the same fights over and over and over and, again. And I think a lot of people watching can relate to that. And, and we were very specific about this show. We didn't want people who were just married. We're talking, if you have a partner or a long time relationship, we're, you found the one and now the real work begins. Had you underestimated, Penn, like the little fights that might creep in that then turn into this avalanche? 100%. The most dangerous fights are the ones that you're not having. And when you first get married, you walk on eggshells around each other. You, you try to make sure that the other person is comfortable without really talking about what it is that you really want. I think both of us were deficient in telling each other what we want and telling them why we wanted what we wanted. And when you don't do that, it just, it really builds up. So, you know, they call it sometimes a seven-year itch, the famous movie, but there's some scientific proof they claim around that seven year is when you start to have that buildup of the pressure of the marriage. Halfway through the 16, were you seeing these cracks, so to speak? I think that's actually pretty accurate. I mean, that's really when we started doing the work, was right yeah. around halfway through. Yeah. And I think, I mean, right, the newness, the newness of any relationship, it releases that dopamine mm -hmm. in your brain. So that's about when it starts to wear off. <laughs> so around the halfway wow. mark, the dopamine starts to wear off. The real life of the relationship seeps in. Up next, Penn and Kim tell us about their biggest fight ever. They call it the battle of the bra. I don't know what that means, but we'll be right back. <laughs> fight. It's around dinner time and I call my wife. And this is how I heard the phone call. He calls me and says, ah, I don't know what you've been doing all day. I'm just probably sitting there eating bonbons, but <laughs> I could really go for some chicken wings. So there was a pause at the end of the line and I thought she was going to be like, yeah, let's go. I'm getting in the car. I'll meet you there because I was with the kids. And there's this pause and she goes, I can't. I've already taken my bra off. Obviously. You're like, I already defrosted this rubbery chicken and you gave me zero notice. <laughs> We're talking with Kim and Finn Holderness. They're the YouTube sensations known for their viral family videos and their new book is called Everybody Fights. So why not get better at it? And that was a dramatization of what they called their <laughs> biggest fight, which they also write about in the book. Okay, so Kim, what was at the heart of that fight? <laughs> okay, it may seem silly, but for me, 
You cannot ask a woman <laughs> to put her bra back on at the end of the day. I'm sorry. It just like it comes unlatched and then I'm it's done. It's like a light switch. And, and, and I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Well, I haven't yeah. worn some bras for 50 years, including one now. I still don't understand what you're saying. And that, that, that it, yeah, was it a bigger issue of. Yeah, it's oh, the it's yeah. it's the decompression and then having literal decompression and then having to put it all back together without him being considerate of this. Right, and I think that's where it got. And it, and yeah. it was the, so we write about this because we actually took this fight to our counselor because we thought it was so silly because right. it escalated out of control. I said this, he responded with, "Well, you're not spontaneous," mm -hmm. and then I hit yeah. him back with, "You're you don't you don't respect what I'm cooking or and you're wasteful I, with our money, you're spending too much money." It, it went back and forth. Your question, Tamron, was what was at the heart of this yeah. matter, which was that she didn't want to put her bra back on. But it spiraled into this crazy fight. And so the big learning lesson here is that you should just stick with your first fight and then get to the other stuff. Because I needed, and so our counselor gave us this term called like stay in the airport. Nobody wants to be in the airport. They want to get to their destination. They want to fly off to right. Fiji or Miami or somewhere fine. But you got to stay in the really awkward space of that one fight. So we learned how to have one fight at a time. It doesn't mean that those other issues aren't important. Right. But we needed to have that one fight, which is... Hey, okay, why don't you go out? You take the kids. I'm going to sit here, you know, without a bra and on the couch. And, like, that, it could have ended right there. So, Penn, really how did you learn like to keep it to the one fight? Because, to Kim's point, you do start off with the initial issue, and then the longer you're going back and forth, you can end up volleying grievances without focusing in on that one fight. Yeah, so a lot of the tools that we use to stick with that fight, for me, it's like take a deep breath and don't have that thing in the holster locked and loaded to go back at her. Also, try words like, I hear you, or this is a good one, uh, tell me more. Yeah. And you stay in the fight and you also validate what the other person's saying. So, Kim, I mean, by the time he said, I hear you on the seventh argument, I know you have a list of your top 10 arguments that you've had. Does that get annoying? Because I sometimes feel like when people, I hear you, I'm listening, you now know that they're going to the therapy language versus being in the moment and talking to you as he did 16 years ago when you started. It's so funny. This happened this weekend. Yeah. Because I Because you know it's coming when you hear I hear yeah, you. Oh, crap, we're in a fight. He's he just like, said, I, I hear you. I'm, I hear you. I'm like, do you? Because you got your phone in your hand. So we square shoulders. We make eye contact. We sit down. Because it's it that's the work of the relationship, mm -hmm. right? It's showing up, creating space, and really listening. Right. So for as much as this... This book and our process was about learning how to talk to each other. So much of, that, of, of it was just shutting up and listening, listening. to each other. Pin, yeah. you know, you've talked about on social media, folks call you guys couples goals. They use you as this, this perfect couple, you know, that can be aspirational, inspiration, all of those things. Does that put pressure on you now, especially that you give out this advice and you've written the book, to keep it perfect? I would say we took some of the pressure off by writing this book wow. and showing our butts <laughs> to everybody. Um, because, and, and what we've gotten instead of, hey, couple goals from this book has been, yeah, me too. Oh, then that's what people, I, I can see that. Yeah, me too. Because I think that's a part of, again, the journey of it, the getting the right person in your life or whatever you do to do that and then making it work. So thank you so much for joining us and congrats on all the success. Thank, thank you. So you. Much.